Hello my soccer universe and welcome to my Liga Eredivisie review. Boy, I was actually wanting to put a little bit more emphasis this time around on the Eredivisie and then Liga uh, completely exploded with madness. Madness, absolute madness. Literally and figuratively. Uh, I think it was last season as well that in round three all the wheels came 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 off. That in a league that actually wants to be in the spotlight, but no, it's not not necessarily now for all the right reasons. Uh, we have to start on Friday in a way where you know <laughs> it was so funny. I think I heard on Thursday I read maybe Messi will start in Brest knowing full well and then when, when I read the article that uh, the plan is that he, he starts after the, in the international break so two more games maybe next week maybe a little bit but I actually think they want to have him play first at a home game I have this feeling and uh, it was a PSG performance that we have seen so uh, so far with a lot of in individuals not necessarily playing at, 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 at a team not necessarily uh, playing any shape but the class is just enough to go through that you can see two goals that's maybe something you want to look into um, that even your goalkeeper Navas who made a great save maybe also you know two can't consider you don't, don't room on the bench maybe not that right but then you know you have the star power under Herrera yes help of the goalie gives you see Mbappé also a uh, heads it in from far of far out and I don't think Mbappé is uh, necessarily known for heading all that much uh, and then you know it goes 2-1 into, into the half because Brest pull, 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 pull back then there's not much happening and then Idrissa Gay from out of nowhere makes a shot yeah goalkeeper sees it should have had it but it was still a pretty awesome shot makes it 3-1 85th, so 3 2, and then on an, an attack where Hakim, uh, um, Di Maria plays to Hakim, who immediately returns it and wonderful finish. Typically, um, Di, Di Maria finished the way that he won the Copa America also. Give PSG a 4 2 win, and they are the only team that have won all their games so far. And that is even more surprising since of the other uh, three teams that are up there, they are really not getting going in any way. Monaco losing at home to Lance. And not even undeserved. Uh, Saint Etienne cl uh, clawing back. I mean, Bura Gilmos gave Lille a lead, but Saint Etienne came kicking back and it was tight. That Lyon against Clermont Foot does not win. That was a little bit more of a interesting tra reminder, a bit of uh, uh, Hartberg's performance at last year. Yes, they accept or not as many goals. Because Lyon did everything that they could except not convert all the numerous, numerous, numerous chances. Um, however, Dan Belay, Musa Denerik scored two for them. Uh, and a wonderful goal by Paqueta had made it already 3-1 at the half. And it was only at that moment a question of time. How big will the uh, margin be in, in, in a way? But Dan Belay misses a huge chance and then... Um, more and more uh, Clermont pulls one back and that is a team that's for the first time in league. Uh, just have that in mind, just have that in mind and they have been doing really 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 well so far, really well. Leon not so much because uh, they cannot, I think they had a three on two or three on one and cannot get it sorted so sort out and so it happens what it happens in the last minute Clermont equalizes and it's three three. Uh, unbelievable result. Uh, so Monaco, Lille, Lyon, all really having a rough start. So Lille where PSG is flying up there and you will see it in the expected standings in a little bit uh, that it has a huge, huge impact on uh, PSG's ch ch chance of winning this title, which they probably can walk to at this if, the, if this continues this way. Uh, another, I have to talk about the Breton Derby, although I didn't see about but Rennes wins that one. Wow, Neil, this, uh, I, I don't know, I like the Bretagne and so for me this was... This was maybe, maybe the outstanding game, but there was also the Derby at the Côte d'Azur and that really descended into absolute 100% madness. The game itself was fine and uh, I think Kasper Dolberg gave, gave him this uh, one nil lead with a chested goal right after the half. But the problem is, or the problem were the fans. The fans in the, in the stadium that were pelting the Marseille players, whenever there was a corner kick, was there, they were throwing bottles or other kinds of things. And in the 75th, I think it was a Marseille corner. Yeah, it was a Marseille corner. Marseille playing in the wonderful, wonderful uh, Puma third kits. I decided not to make a dedicated video on those 
you will see it in my jersey re review of all, of all the thing about them. Uh, but the bottle then hits uh, Dimitri Payet and he completely loses and starts hauling them back into the stands. And I totally understand why he's doing it. But I think throwing it back, it just allows so much trouble. And of course, the fans come, come and feel it's a big invasion. Uh, fans of uh, you know nice players trying to hold back the fans the teams against it i mean it it was really hard to sort to source so, so that i think in many ways the nice players ag 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 actually tried to hold the fans uh back and also in the, and were kind of on the side of the marseille players but then suddenly you see sampaioli like a madman being not able to be restrained uh i don't know what it happened there. I guess he was insulted by some of, of the fans. I thought that the Nice president talked talk to fans somehow. It was just madness. And the referee abandoned the game and then uh, the league kind of demanded that the game be finished. Marseille already said they cannot play because they were, I think, Wanduzi or others had a, a, a actually picked up injuries and so on in the whole melee. Uh, crazy scenes. And yeah. Southern France is one of the hottest areas uh, that no one really uh, knows so much. So, and for now, I have not counted this game in my uh, statistics. It is an abandoned match. We have to see what will come uh, come out. I I don't even want to speculate. I mean, I think uh, uh, Nice will get a hefty fine and probably have to play in front of uh, uh, without spectators. That might surely be happening, but uh, what interests me is because it was Payet throwing it back that actually incited the riot. Um, whether this will now be counted for Marseille or not, that is for me the interesting part here. Uh, I wouldn't want to be the judge of all of that because um, I completely understand why Payet acted that way. If you get pelted the whole time, your team and, and so on, you, it, it just gets enough. I totally understand that. And I know that there are hot headedness and it is hot and you know, there are some uh, fuse blows. I do get that. I still think you can throw it back. <laughs> In any case, I am curious for uh, the verdict there. Um, and so, yeah, uh, as I said, PSG now with the. Uh, if you look at the table, it's PSG and then there's Angers, who have been doing well, but then Clermont Fult is up there, uh, out of nowhere with seven points. Pretty amazing. And then look at the bottom of the table. You have Lyon there, you have Lille there, and you have Monaco. Bottom. Uh, second to last. Uh, absolutely upside down world in there. And as, as I said, for expected like standings, PSG flying ahead uh, and it's still the other Lyon, Lille and Monaco uh, hanging in there but it's the beginning of the season we have to see how it pans out as well um, not really the I mean Nice Bordeaux is the next one eh? but I'm not sure if Nice will be able to play that home and not Lyon is a traditional duel to kick off the next round so uh, just saying that let's move to the Netherlands, the Netherlands. Uh, PSV after a tough showing uh, in the Champions League qualification, 4-1 uh, over Cambuur. Honestly, PSV in many ways is flying. They just didn't show it necessarily in uh, Lisbon. Uh, I saw some parts of 20 against Ajax where I actually had had, had the, <laughs> the feeling it was a very even in game that Ajax somehow managed to get the lead in and then it looked for a long time that it will stay that way and then proper from far out. And that was a weird goal to be honest. Um, makes it 1-1. think it was to deserve the result. And then also, um, after, after that Feyenoord against the go-ahead Eagles had a tough time. I mean, I'm wearing for the first time a Feyenoord jersey here. Uh, had a tough time, honestly, uh, against the team from Deventer. Uh, it, yes, they had more chances, but they couldn't connect. They couldn't co connect. I honestly I have to say what I, I, I was watching it because of Gernot Trauner, the former last cap captain. And like the last game, whenever there was a dead ball situation, the bald head was showing up and yeah, made, made, made me smile. I wish that he would score a goal. This was the first time that he really played in front of such a huge crowd, I think. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe when they played the Besiktas, but I think other, other than that, uh, he didn't have it. So, 
at least the home support. This must have been something uh, rather amazing for him in the end. It's a 2 0 win, fully deserved. Uh, however, it was a lot more work than initially thought. I also have to. I looked at the go ahead Eagles jersey and I couldn't A, F, F, figure out who is the supplier and B, they don't have names on the back. That was a little a little bit weird. Uh, I think the AZ game was postponed because of European qualifiers, maybe. But if you know more, please uh, let me know. No, no below. And William Dwey, who just lost 4 0 at home to Feno in the first game, beat Vitesse, a good team from last, last season, 3 0 away from home. So that's a pretty uh, impressive result as well there. And I'm wearing Feyenoord because Feyenoord is top of, of, of the league, just, just ahead of PSV. Ajax dropping points already, but we had that at the beginning of the as well. Ajax is not well after the winter break went down, so we cannot really say much there. It's much the expected standings is still Ajax very, very much ahead. Uh, PSV and Feyenoord um, kind of round out, but you know, there's, there's a definite step down after PSV. It seems to be a two-way race at this moment, at least from the ratings that I get. And in the next round we have Ajax against Vitesse, which last season was that they had, was the cup final. Um, if we look at the other big, uh, big ones with PSV against Groningen, uh, interesting. I'm looking for you that Utrecht, cannot say much about that as that against Herrenfein. So maybe some interesting games in there. I think the Ajax game def de 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 definitely piques my interest. So. That was it from me from uh, those two Western European leagues in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way two leagues that don't don't get as much spotlight as they probably should. Those leagues should have a lot more money, and I think it would be fun. But uh, Liga does its best. Saying hello, we are also here, and hello, we, there's a whole lot of excitement in that league, um, but it goes in all directions, good and bad. In any case, let me know what you thought uh, about the action in those two leagues on, on the weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell. So in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.